little bit late. A little bit late today. We had a few issues today. And not the least of which is somebody called me like two minutes before showtime. Of course, with an emergency that wasn't an emergency. And so that's how that happens. Let's see what we got going on here with audio. At least we don't have to restart the broadcast. That's good news. I got two stunners, one steel and one titanium. Take your choice. One steel titanium and one 18 karat gold stunner right here. You know, I do not like the white balance on this camera. I'm going to put it back on auto white balance, I think, next time. I just don't like the, the look of this. I, I did a custom white balance. It should be correct, and I swear it is not correct. But it is what it is. Craig, if you were this late as a deli clerk, I would reprimand you. Okay, so let's get caught up on the comments here because there's been some people lingering. Lance is in the house. He says hello to everybody. And let's see, any watch collection updates <laughs> from Lance? I hope not. How's the selling going? I took Craig's advice and sold two Citizen watches in two days. Got to con consolidate the collection. Got a concise collection now, says Eduardo. How tardy is Craig going to be today? <laughs> that was a good question. Uh, nothing at the moment. I'm trying to sell my Tag Heuer 1500 in my Victorinox, though. What's up, Carlos? And let's see. I have a feeling Craig's new stunner, stunner will not keep time as well as the 231. He got lucky with that one. Hi, everyone. It's going to be interesting to see. <coughs> Uh-oh, I've got the thing. Oh, boy. I've got the thing. I think I've had the thing for like two months. Let's see. He got lucky with that one. Okay, I read that. Uh, well, Craig initially created this YouTube stream with a start time around 11 a.m., so he's pretty late before he changed it to 5. Yeah, I keep forgetting to change. They have like a default time that's a certain amount after when you're creating the thing, and unless you change it, it doesn't. Yeah, so I forget sometimes to change that in my haste. Didn't Craig's new watch already lose a second or two? No, it is running, I think, about two seconds fast. We checked it yesterday, and that's about where I set it. So it's, you know, it, I, we did a freeze frame. I think it was about two seconds fast, about the same as the uh, other spring drive, my 231. So that's where I set it, and so we're going to see in a week or so how close it is that. And then in a month, well, the month will really tell us something. And there is in the house. Well, Craig initially created... Okay. I already read that. Okay. This thing jumps around on me. Uh, let's see. Not, not as bad as when Crappy Pro Spoon shows by days. Wine God's name, would you waste, waste your life watching Crappy? I've never watched him. I don't know what that's about. And Carlos is in the house. And he says he likes Crappy. Craig, if you were... This late, okay, I read that, the deli clerk thing. By the way, I uh, gave my dad the 007 yesterday. He loved it. So much more stunning in person. Yeah, that's the thing about these Grand Seikos. You just cannot capture them in photos or video. You just can't do it. Also, the pattern dial is unbelievably subtle. And what's the blue like, depending on the light that it's in? Does it look real dark in some lighting like the 005 I have, or does it look blue all the time? I'll be interested to know that. Uh, almost five minutes late, says Durr. I'll call in next week, Carlos, if you can see it live. I'll call in next week, Carlos, so you can see it live. Need to get it off his wrist, though. Okay, perfect, Triforce Rich. Absolutely call in. Kyle's in the house. Let us know if there's anything exciting going on on the West Coast. And Leslie's in the house. And Lance says hi to Kyle. And Carlos says... That will be hard. Oh, to get it off his wrist. Take, get it off when he's taking a nap or something. Let's see here. Uh, crappy stream is horrible, says Durr. Uh-oh. Crappy has interesting old man stories and insights. Well, there you go. Is he as old as me? Is Crappy as old as me? Okay, so I'm going to wind this. Let me see if I can get it close to the mic so you can hear. Whoops. You can't really hear anything. There's, it makes no noise, really. No, I can't hear anything. But I'm winding it.
just the same. I really have to um, get into the habit of remembering to wind this because if it stops obviously I won't be able to I'm going to wind it right to the stop. I'm going to wind it up all the way. And it does get a little bit tight feeling when it gets close. And there it is at the end. I wound it all the way to the end. And I, I haven't read the manual or anything. I'm assuming I can wind it to the till it hits the stop. And that won't damage it. But I'm never one to read manuals, unfortunately. Uh, let's see. Crappy has the crappiest content out there. And the crappiest couple of crap watches. <laughs> oh, geez. So that's a aptly named channel, I, I see. <clears throat> Triforce looks very dark blue in low lighting, and in the sun it gets sunburst blue, almost royal blue. Okay, interesting. So it never really looks black though, because mine will look black in a lot of lighting. That it almost looks black right there. You can see there the the 005. I mean that dial really looks black in that photo, and it's not black, but it looks black a lot of the time. <clears throat> Let's see. You need a ton of light to see the 2020 pattern. It's amazing how they did that. Uh, be a serve, Craig. If one were to already own a Tudor or two, would suggest that they put them up for sale or destroy them immediately with a 44 Magnum. No, I would sell them. I would get whatever money you can out of them. I'm not a I'm not a Tudor hater. I'm just a I don't really care. I mean, it's like a lot of brands. I just don't even care. I mean, it's just not even something we would even consider. I mean, back in the day we wouldn't even consider buying a Tudor. I mean, it just wouldn't even be on our radar screen. So you just bought a Rolex. That's just the way we did back in the day. Uh, Craig, uh, don't wind your watch while it's on your wrist. It's bad for the stem of the crown. Take your watch off first. Oh, okay, there's a tip. I'll tell you though, this stem feels very solid. It doesn't feel at all wimpy or anything like that. And the crown on my 231 also feels very, very solid. The 05 feels pretty good too, but this one feels very solid when I'm winding it. No like play back and forth or, you know, any which way. Uh, it's clearly designed to be manual wound. Um, but yeah, I will do that from now on. I'll try to remember to wind it before I put it on my wrist. I think that's probably a good, a good move. Um, Craig, do you ever take the 002 off your wrist and look at the beautiful spring drive movement? Not very often, not very often, but I've glanced at it a few times. Craig, what's good, what's good doggy? I, well, I don't know what you mean by doggy, Brett. Brett, what do you mean by doggy? Um, you mean a, an actual pet, an actual dog to get? Uh, please clarify. Crappy could be lurking right now. Please don't hurt his feelings. Uh, yes, it will almost look black, but more of a very dark blue. The Crappy Luxury Channel is so bad, I heard Tudor was going to make Crappy an ambassador. Craig, back in the day, would you buy a Tudor for the gardener? No, no, they weren't even, it wasn't even something we would consider. We knew they were out there, but it was like, you just wouldn't even consider it. Also, the finishing is so good that it reflects rainbows on the indices. I got a pic of that. I can send that. Absolutely send it. What's the logo on your shirt? Uh, Congressional Country Club. Congressional Country Club. Okay. Um, so the topic of the show, and really I just wanted to get this out there to try to get information. And I do have a couple of links here. Let me just pull these up. Give me a moment or two, uh, because I'm interested, obviously, in this topic, because I own a watch with a alligator strap, and so we talked about this a little bit in a previous show, about how well these things hold up, or how well they don't hold up, and there's not there's a real dearth of information out there I mean it's just there's not that much pertinent information not that much in the way of videos not that much in the way of photos uh, there is some information here and there and some of it contradicts 
And I mentioned on the channel the other day that some people made the comment that crocodile leather is is more expensive and more sought after than alligator. And I made the comment that that is absolutely incorrect, that high, a high-grade alligator hide compared to a high-grade crocodile hide, the alligator will almost always command more money. It's more desirable for work for leather working and so on. Now there are a couple of exceptions. Some saltwater crocs, uh, and I forget the other, but there are a couple of rare exceptions where the leather is on par with or maybe even a little better than alligator. But that's the rare exception. Most crocodile leather out there is not anywhere near at the level of the alligator. So I have confirmed that from several sources. So generally speaking, you definitely want alligator for your strap or for your belt or for your whatever. If you can, your first choice should always be alligator. Okay, and so here is something in one of the forums and this gentleman asked the question about uh, a leather strap and again the normal answers a lot of people say depends on how and where it's worn I've destroyed a leather strap in a year I wore it exclusively for I wore it exclusively for everything I think he meant should have said extensively for everything um, I think that how dry you keep it will make a world of difference. Okay. So, and again, David made the comment about uh, he, he doesn't wear his in the heat and, and humidity. And here's another comment uh, about the leather, and it goes into, you know, a bunch of information and, and the benefits of the deployment clasp and things like that. But I'll tell you, I, I really think that the construction of the strap has to have a lot to do with this because the some of the straps I've seen that have failed, it seems like it's the it's the glue where they glue the two layers together, where you've got the alligator on the outside and then you've got the softer leather on the inside, lambskin or whatever it is. And some of those are actually glued. Now this one is is sewn. I'm guessing it's sewn and glued. And I would think that that would would help tremendously if it is sewn with high quality polyester thread. I would think that would really keep it from separating or having that issue. And then, of course, the deployment clasp will keep you from having the flex issue where you're feeding it through the hole each time and having to severely flex the strap. Now, the strap on my previous gold stunner was probably at least 10 years old. It, it, it was the original strap, and it was at least 10 years old, and it was still holding up pretty good. Now, I don't know how much that watch was actually used in 10 years, but... I'm beginning to think that a high quality strap, properly stitched, high, high grade leather, properly tanned, I'm thinking it's going to last several years at least, even in daily use, even in hot weather. I'm, I don't think I'm buying the fact that they just fall apart as soon as you get them out in the heat, heat and humidity, with all due respect to, to the Davester. Um, so, I would like to get first-hand information from people that have actually worn a high-end strap on a regular basis, on a daily basis, including in hot weather, and how well they have or have not held out, held up. So please put comments, if you're watching this after the fact, which most people watch after the fact, please put comments so that I can get gather more information on this. Um, Let's see, and there's supposed to be a picture. Let me see the uh, picture here. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. This is the 007 on his dad's wrist. wrist. Cool. Super, super cool. And yeah, I bet that does look stunning in person. 
I bet that does look stunning in person. I have no, no doubt in my mind. Let's see here. Lance says, Hadley Roma makes excellent straps. And I've got some links to some place, a place that apparently has some really good straps. But on, I'll show that in a minute here. And uh, I prefer alligator over crocodile for aesthetic reasons, you serve. No idea about that. I know my 5196 strap is alligator. There you go. It should be. Um, I would use shoe cream on the strap maybe once a month like my shoes, Jaden. I have some special stuff that's specially for exotic leather. Let me let me grab it real quick and I'll show you. Now this this has been highly recommended for exotic leathers like alligator and it it really seems to work well and I use this on my belts and my uh, my crocodile boots and my ostrich boots and I'll give you a closer look at what it what it is and this is a uh this is a respected brand uh, and I do like it and it's really easy to work with so that's a good option for um, for treating the exotic leathers I think uh, let's see here uh, my parents are good Christian people not gangsters Edward uh, okay uh, Jean Ro Rocho makes very high quality alligator straps as well as many other types of leather you can also get an alligator strap made with rubber lining. There you go. Michael, if you do you know do you know them? If you do, message them and I would love to have them on a show to Skype in and talk about their straps. That would be really good. And anybody else knows anybody that, that's good that makes high quality straps, I'd love to get them on and, and pick their brain. I would think alligator would be less than crocodile. Aren't crocodile more where I never see crocodile straps? Well, you, you're generally not going to because it's an inferior leather to work with. It, it's not as good to work with. So they're, they're, they generally don't use crocodile because it's not as high quality. The, the crocodile that is high quality is very rare and probably would be expensive. But for the most part, they're going to use alligator because it's a, it's a better choice. It's a better leather to work with for a lot of reasons. Let's see, does Rolex offer deployment clasps? I think they do. I know, and they have my utmost respect after raising you. I was just making a cocktail of things. I read another. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, I can't stand straps. I'm a bracelet guy all year round. There you go. I'll tell you, I was never a strap guy either, but this, this watch is so freaking comfortable on wrist. I mean, I've been converted, <laughs> and I think I'm going to wear this thing a lot. I think I'll even wear it with, like, a shirt like I have on now. I, I think I'm going to wear this thing a lot all year round. I love this freaking, and it's so freaking gorgeous to look at. Are you kidding me? So I'm going to find out for sure because I'm going to wear this a lot. So I will be a good test case to see how well these um, Grand Seiko factory straps hold up. Because I'm going to wear it when I'm out sweating and in the heat, and I'm going to wear it whenever the heck I feel like it. Uh, Willie says, hello, just turned in for the first time. Is this watch channel? <laughs> no, it's not just a watch channel, but we do talk a lot about watches. Brent's in the house. Where's Lamont? There you go. I'm playing with strap colors on a watch, but I always go back to the bracelet. Be you serve? Uh, nice watch, Carlos. Uh, I clean my straps with saddle soap and then mink oil. Be you serve? There you go. Uh, Durr, I bet Crappy wears fake fake gator straps on his Victorinox and chats it up with Lamont's dad about his day date. Fox uh, alligator is, a, is as low class as it gets. Yeah, that usually doesn't look good. It usually looks pretty, 
pretty bad. I cannot think of anyone deserving it more. You know, and here's the thing. I really think that a lot of it depends on how the, the leather's tanned and how it's, it's uh, constructed. Because back in the day, you know, we used to wear the, our boat shoes and stuff and get them soaking wet with salt water and just rinse them out and just keep wearing them. And, and you know, the leather held up for years just being totally abused. And I did read in one of the forums, and I unfortunately I couldn't find it. I tried to find it again. There was a guy that said that he goes swimming with his alligator strap and, you know, goes in the pool with it and whatever. He doesn't care, and he says it, it holds up fine. So I don't know. I think like everything else, I think there's a lot of, lot of false information out there, folks floating around and also a lot of degrees of quality of construction of these things I think a lot of the straps are probably really poorly made you know made in China or whatever with really lousy glues and, and or lousy threads or lousy stitching and yeah maybe they do fall apart <clears throat> let's see uh, trashy Larry's in the house okay sounds like our host is a leather expert no I'm trying to learn about it I'm trying to learn about it because I bought this stunner. Let me give you a close-up of the 002 stunner. Oops. I bought this 002 stunner. And it has an um, alligator strap on it with a deployant clasp. And I'm thinking about wearing it a lot more than I initially thought I would just wear it as a dress watch. But I think I'm going to wear it a lot more than that. So I'm wondering how well this strap is going to hold up. Because some people have said that, you know, you get them out in the heat and humidity and they fall apart. So I'm not so sure if that's true or not. Hello from Switzerland, where I am enjoying MIT002 for three weeks now. Oh, wait a minute now. You've, you've got an 002? You've got this same watch, Thomas? Please do tell. And if you do, please send an uh, email a photo. I'd love to see my sister watch. Craig, throw the gold stunner on a NATO strap. Be a sir. Rip that Band-Aid off. <laughs> Good weather. Is this a day stream? What does that mean? <laughs> Is this a day stream? It's daytime here. Um, I hate to discover the obvious. Uh, hate to discover the obvious, but gators live in the water. <laughs> well, but that doesn't mean anything. That the, the 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 skin is no longer alive. We've killed the gator. <laughs> so time check, folks. Um, yeah, I don't think the fact that the gator was able to go in the water really means that the dead skin that we took off him and tanned that it necessarily can go in the in the water. But I like the sentiment. Craig, 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 guess you'll have to be the test study. I might have to be. Uh, let's see. Um, Greg, lately it is. I'm very grateful Craig does it during this lockdown period. Is the 002 new or pre-owned? Well, mine I bought new from Steve at Little Treasury Jewelers, littletreasury.com. The link is in the description and he does have one more he bought two he's a Grand Seiko dealer he got two in one's on my wrist right here and as far as I know he still has the one other in stock ready to go Tim says I don't have experience with crocodile or alligator leather mine is calf leather handmade from Etsy worn for almost two years no problem he may also make crocodile and alligator straps Tim do you wear it in the heat and humidity in other words it does your wrist kind of like sweat sweat on it sometimes uh, let us know give us more gory details ostrich is supposedly tougher than croc or alligator but those bumps disgust me I don't know really if that's true I've got a pair of ostrich boots and I've got uh, crocodile uh, skin boots um, I'm not so sure the ostrich is, is tougher. It might be. I think what is really tough is stingray. I think that's really tough stuff. And I'll tell you what else is tough stuff, and no joke, is kangaroo leather. Kangaroo leather is no freaking joke. So, um, so yeah. 
Uh, Thomas is in the house. He says yes. Uh, Thomas, can you send a photo? My name, craigship at gmail.com. C-R-A-I-G-S-H-I-P-P, two P's, craigship at gmail.com. Send a photo. We would love to see it. Durr says, we come here to talk high-quality menswear and watches, and we go to Crappy's channel to talk low-quality kitty litter. <laughs> Same experience with boat shoes when I was growing up. Used, to, used and heavily enjoyed. Got wet often and dried naturally. David in the house. So, David, do you really think that your Grand Seiko factory strap would fall apart, or are you just being overly cautious? Please tell us tell us the truth. If you really went out and just just wore that thing and you know, not a care in the world, just wore it like you would any other watch. Hot, cold, doesn't make any difference. Wet, dry. Do you really think that strap would fall apart? Let us know. And Lance says found a Grand Seiko for Brianna. Check the email. We will do that. And let's see. Uh, Willie, ask if the 002 is new or pre-owned. Gold is probably harder to find these days. Stainless steel seems to be more popular. Oh, yeah, everybody loves stainless steel. It's like the luxury, the luxury metal of the, of the decade. And I think a lot of people are delusional. Uh, Thomas, you can call into the show if you want to show off your 002 and discuss with Craig. Absolutely. If you send an email to me, I'll give you the Skype number, and you can call into the show. I'd love to see it. Uh, talk about tough. Step on a stingray. That's tough. I will do so, says Thomas. Anyone ever seen a lady size Rolex Pepsi? I don't think they make it. My friend has one and claims that it's real. She said she bought, she brought to a Rolex AD, and they cannot say anything. Yeah, no, I, I don't think they ever made that. I bet Craig's 002 is better than any other 002. Well, we'll see. We will find out. Let's see. Let's check it out. Maybe we got a picture of this other 002. Maybe it's incredible. Uh, let's see. Okay, Lance, Lance sent two images. Let's take a look at these first. Here's an Omega. That's a pretty good-looking watch. It wouldn't be my first choice. I'm not a fan of the Roman numerals. I know Carlos likes the Roman numerals, but that's a good-looking watch, and I don't like the lugs, uh, the way the lugs are kind of squared off to the case. I, I prefer lugs that kind of flow into the case, rounded. But uh, So that wouldn't be my first choice, but interesting watch, Lance. So let's go back here, and let's look at this other one. Now oh, here's the one for, for uh, Brianna. That is a stunner. That is a stunner. I wonder, though, that probably does not have a screw-down crown. And I think for Brianna, we need something with a screw-down crown because she's heavy use. Heavy use. Uh, let's see. Um, stingray leather is ugly and doesn't look right on watches. Be served. Craig wins the trip to Rolex AD with Bree for the day date, Derek? That's a good question. Uh, they, Maryland is probably going to be one of the last states to allow places like that to open. This is like the socialist state of Maryland here. And I don't know. It might be the end of this month. It might be a whole other month. I mean, it, it is really sad here in Maryland. The, the jackbooted thugs have their, their boot on the throat of the businessman. Uh, let's see. Carlos, that is a fact. Okay. My rotation is normally leather strap, autumn through spring. Bracelet can be year-round. NATO is mostly late spring through early autumn. Well, I understand your rotation, David. I understand that. But push come to shove, do you think you could wear that leather stunner strap with the deployant clasp year-round? Or do you really think that strap would fall apart? What do you think? What's your thought on that? Personally, I'm not a fan of leather straps, like the looks, but I'm a bracelet guy and occasionally rock a NATO Triforce search. I'll tell you what, though, this thing, <laughs> this thing is amazing. It just looks gorgeous. It's super comfortable. I was shocked. I, I really was. I thought it would be almost like a chore to wear it. I thought that I would just prefer wearing the other watches, but the opposite is true. I prefer wearing this. It just feels so great on wrist. 
and it's so much fun to look at either the the, the top of it or the the clasp side both are just a blast to look at um, so let me move this over here see if you can get a look at that I mean it's just it's just amazing to wear <laughs> it just is a blast to wear and I don't think it's just because it's new. I, I think it just is a blast to wear. The way it sits so flat on the wrist and and it's just so comfortable. It's like it's not even it's like it's just floating there. Um I am just blown away by the practicality and the comfort of this watch. I thought it was just gonna be a dress watch that I just wear with suits and it's impressive with a suit and that's the end of it, right? But I think I could wear this as an all-arounder. I really do it's that freaking good and I love the fact that it doesn't have a date on it I love that um, let's see here uh, Lance where did you get your wealth Bitcoin there you go Brett in the house I've worn it while exercising and the wrist gets sweaty seems fine it won't fall apart but maybe in time get a bit dirty I think the strap will be fine says Tim uh, heard on another channel Rolex is having a limited opening of their factory Monday okay good news I like some Roman numerals I actually like a lot of those in the Omega there you go do you really like the 002 do I oh my gosh I think I just said oh absolutely no remorse at all Willie I absolutely love it now what would change that if it turns out that it's running slow that could be a problem. That, my friends, could be a problem. If it's running a little fast, I'm good with that. If it's running slow, that could be a problem. But other than that, everything else about this watch, I wouldn't change a thing. I wouldn't change one thing. And we will know in a week or two whether or not it's running slow or not. If it is, that could be a problem. Let's see. Um... David Rowling's REE, my GS strap falling apart is a bit extreme. I do not like it to get sweaty from 100 plus degree desert heat unnecessarily and will extend strap if you want to wear yours. Okay, so it's a, it's a precaution that you're taking. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. Um, I don't buy Bitcoin, but I do invest and buy stocks, says Lance in the house. Buy low and sell high. Okay. Craig is is chuffed to bits, whatever that means. Okay. W Willie is referring to the dog man. Okay. If you want to wear yours around, then by all means, go for it, David. <clears throat> yeah, and we'll have some, we'll, we'll know more, right? If it falls apart, that's going to tell us something. It doesn't get super hot and humid here, but it gets, well, it gets pretty humid. It doesn't get to 100 degrees that often. It gets close, but it certainly gets humid. I mean, very humid. I, I think a lot more humid than Vegas. Uh, we're famous for our humidity here. So this watch is definitely going to get exposed to some humidity. I can tell you that right now. And Brett's in the house. Nice, Lance. Which are you buying? Okay, Carlos, I, I have wear 20 years as daily was strap but it was calf and a brightling and rubber on a hubo okay did clive get skype <laughs> that's a good question if it's running slow i hear you can send it back to japan for an adjustment willie in the house well hopefully that won't be the case hopefully it'll be running a little bit fast and we'll be good uh Durr is in the house and he says uh hubo rubber leather combo straps are phenomenal I'm a big Grand Seiko fan. I own the 002, 003, and 211. They're all beautiful. Thomas in the house. Absolutely stunning. Oh, you got to send us a, a collection photo. A photo with all three. That'll be stunning. Uh, Lance, uh, Brett, I mainly invest in, in banks and technology companies. Interesting. Banks. Okay. All right, let's check and see 
if we have any more emails. We don't have the picture of the 002 yet. That hasn't gotten here yet, but when it does, we will pull that puppy up. That's what we'll do. Uh, let's see here. Um, Lance, you should be DCA into Bitcoin. Okay. All right. Now, let me check and see here. Um, okay. Here's another point here. The inner lining of a strap makes a difference. My cheaper customs show moderate signs of wear after 30 to 40 times on the wrist. My better custom straps have shown no signs of wear just yet. Seems like the lining of the higher end straps cost as much as the entire strap on the more affordable ones. I've heard people say that alligator is more water resistant than stamped veggie tan. I don't know the answer to this one so it may be that I'm crediting the lining when it's really the type of material. Mostly I find the the thread shows more wear than the leather. I should note that my oldest strap is only 18 months and I probably don't wear any strap more than two times a week. So I may not be the best judge. Okay, so there's some feedback on that. Um, Okay, here's another guy, and I won't bother to show this, but he says he wear, he wears his, about, he gets about 400 wears out of his, but he's not saying what the quality of it is. Um, okay, here's one that's a little bit relevant. I have an alligator strap that is several years old and looks fine on the outside, but it's worn on the inside. Also, I will mention that it is most worn and would probably break at the point of the intersection of the two large scales. Over time, the strap has developed a natural curve as if it's on the wrist, even when taken off. Since I started storing my watch on a pillow, which keeps the natural curve even when not worn, it has not really gotten worse. I used to store it flat, essentially flattening the strap when not worn, probably adding wear to the kink failure point. Bottom line, if you th if I think you'll get more lifetime out of a nice leather strap if you keep it stored on a pillow and a watch. Well, what I do is I just set mine down. I, I take it off, and I just um, I just set it down pretty much. Whoops, pretty much like that. So yeah, it's it's kind of maintaining the the shape, right? That it that it is. And I just set it down on a piece of microfiber and I cover it with another piece of microfiber. And, it, and then when I put it on, the deployant clasp just threads right like this, goes right on in. Again, almost no flex to the strap. So, and I gotta put this keeper down. I mean, it's very little, very little flexing on the strap at all. Um, I think it's going to last quite a while. The, it, the quality of the, th the threads that they used, if they used high quality polyester threads, which they certainly should have, it should hold up a long time. That's what I'm guessing. We will find out. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. <clears throat> time check while I get a drink of water. Ah. <clears throat> okay, Lance, don't invest in Tudor or you might end up living in Portland with your own YouTube channel talking about kitty litter. Okay, Triforce Rich is in the house. Thomas, get those pics into Craig. I assume expect um, at at something desert anywhere is more humid than Vegas okay I really like to do the Black Bay 36 I wouldn't buy a Tudor until I have a Rolex though okay Tarford Switch by the way be careful with the those GS in Switzerland they may execute for you for treason uh, Lance hold BTC and hold it hard real hard 
Yeah, you got to have a strong hand. If you're long-term Bitcoin, you, you got to have a strong hand because the weak hands get flushed out on the on the on the downturns. The weak hands panic and sell, and they end up getting burned. And then it goes, it shoots up, and they sell, and they think they did the right thing. And then it goes back down, and they're all patting themselves on the back. And then it shoots up higher than it was when they sold it, <laughs> and so so they end up buying it back at a higher amount. It is really hard to play the the in and out game with uh, Bitcoin. You're best off just holding that puppy long term. That's what I do. Not financial advice on this channel, but that's what I do with mine is I just hold it. Nothing fancy. Just buy and hold. Uh, how peppy are those Priuses? I just saw a guy in one getting pulled over for going 80. Oh, yeah, they're very quick because they've got the torque of that electric motor. Um, yeah, they're very quick. There's no, there are no slouches. Are you expecting the gator strap to hold like a bracelet? Um, no. I mean, I don't think it'll last as long as a bracelet. Uh, but hey, so again, bracelets get stretched and they have is their own issues, right? But I'm expecting it to last four or five years minimum. I'm thinking it's going to last that long. We'll find out. We sure will. Even if it lasts two years, I mean, it's just the cost of doing business. You just replace it, right? Uh, they're easy enough to replace. And we'll look at some uh, some options for replacement bracelets here. Uh, straps, I mean, in a minute, if I remember. Okay. Uh, but I will say this. It's more comfortable than a bracelet. This thing is just super freaking com It's insanely comfortable. This is more comfortable. My 18238 with the President bracelet was super comfortable on wrist. This is more comfortable than that. This is probably the most comfortable watch I've ever worn. Full stop. Done. I mean, it, it, nothing even comes close. So it is absolutely freaking amazing. All right, let's go back to the email. Thomas sent a little pic. And I got to warn you guys, okay? I got to warn you guys. I'm going to zoom in a little bit before I show this. See if I can zoom in. I guess that's the most I can zoom in. Oh, no, there it comes. There it comes. Oh, man. I don't know if I should show you this or not. I'm going to. Yep. Well, okay, I'll show it to you. Look at that stunner. Stunner alert on the channel. Oh, my goodness. Back the truck up are you kidding me look at that stunner stunner alert on the channel full-blown stunner alert back it up folks look at that on the it looks like it's on the factory strap wow wow is all i can say is wow how often do you wear that and maybe he'll be a good one to experiment to see how well that strap holds up how long how often do you wear it i want to know that put it put the answer in the chat and i want to know how comfortable it is do you feel like i'm exaggerating when i talk about the comfort factor on this watch on wrist let us know what you think that by the way if folks are watching that is the sbgy002 sbgy002 18 karat gold grand seiko stunner manual wine spring drive about 10.2 to 10.5 millimeters thick, depending on whose review you read. And it's about 38.5 mils case size. Absolute stunner. Wow. That's all I can say. I am blown away. That is absolutely amazing. Coming in live on the channel. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> we got to have you Skype into the show. I'm going to send you back my Skype just in case anytime you can Skype in. You're always welcome to Skype in. So let me do this right now before I forget. I'm going to reply and give you my Skype handle. And it is. Okay. Okay. All right, Thomas. I just sent you back the uh, the Skype handle 
That is absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> wow. Are you kidding me? Okay. All right. Uh, I mean, that just is a showstopper right there. That just an uh, absolute showstopper. Kevin D equals, I got 20 slash one odd. Thomas can't produce a pick of an 002. <laughs> I guess you just lost that one, Kevin. <laughs> Willie's in the house. 400 wares is just over a year daily. Well, that's not very long. Willie in the house. Yeah, and I, I suspect that wasn't a high, super high quality strap either uh, that he had. Tudor is honestly too good for liberals. <laughs> uh, uh, don't you bribe the police officers there? <laughs> Timex is too good for libs. Only if you're famous. Okay, today... Uh, in Scott Adams' show, he developed a theory about lower levels of testosterone on libs. Seriously. Okay. What about other topics? How about the shutdown? Any thoughts from Willie in the house? I have a calf strap I purposely used and abused to develop a very nice patina. There you go. Yeah, if they get a little bit of wear and tear on them, I mean, that's that's fine. I mean, but if it starts falling apart, that's where I draw the line. If it starts, like, separating, like, the outer part from the inner part, it's just like, and it really starts getting nasty, that's where I think it's time to replace, right? But if it just gets some wear and tear here and there, and yeah, that just adds character. As long as it's fully functional, I'd keep wearing it. Okay, as far as the shutdown, it is... A total scam. We've been the U the United States public has been totally scammed, and it is such a shame that the media and the politicians have scared the public to death over this thing. People that are at risk, older people, people that have pre-existing conditions, they should certainly take precautions and so on. But they shouldn't have shut down the economy. This is a total fail, shutting down the entire freaking economy. They should let young healthy folks go out and do their thing sort of like what they did in Sweden just take some precautions but just let people go about their business because guess what Sweden has done fine they've been fine older folks and folks that are at risk they should take precautions absolutely they should or take the risk if they want to take the risk I mean it's personal responsibility you either take risk or you don't by now, everybody knows what the risks are, so it's not, nobody's hiding the ball. But yeah, this shutdown was a total fail, and it is a mess, and it's hurting a lot of people. It's hurting a lot of people, and there are going to be a lot of deaths because of it, because of the shutdown. That's what I'm predicting. We'll see what happens. So that's it. That's all we'll talk about the shutdown. Uh, people have been scammed. Uh, I have a calf strap. Okay, I already read that one. Lamont's in the house. There you go. Lamont's in the house. Carlos, that's because all libs lack that thing between their legs that would make them men, says Durr. And Willie's in the house. High quality polyester thread. I think any polyester won't let. No, the polyester, the thread that they use in leatherworking, the polyester thread that they use in leatherworking is really good stuff. It doesn't rot and holds up really good. That is one case where you do want polyester. It holds up really good. The old leather works and all. They used to use like silk threads and stuff like that. And that's where you see like a lot of old leather goods, you know, coming apart where the seams are breaking and, and things. is because the older threads, the linen threads and the silk threads and the older materials that they used would rot. And that's where you get the problem. But a modern polyester thread should hold up pretty good if it's high quality. Again, there's different levels of quality of that too uh, let's see Triforce Rich Craig if Lamont comes to us with SD and sees a Seiko 5 he falls in love can't afford will you will you step in also we may have to feed him uh oh uh, do we ever going to get a Grand Seiko 40 millimeter ever well there's a lot of Grand Seikos that are under 40, 40 millimeters but if you're talking about a diver I don't know uh, let's see I'm almost out of H2. I'm going to have to refill that. I, I didn't have it full. Uh, let's see. How can I buy Bitcoin? What bank? Banks don't sell it. Um, you can buy it through the Cash App. You can buy it from Coinbase. Uh, there are several ways you can buy it. 
but it's not not that easy. Triforce Rich says touching the 007 I just bought my dad is 40 millimeters and wears smaller like a 39 millimeter. There you go. And Carlos, uh, not exactly. His thesis was relegated about how man reacts versus other men without fear with good levels of testosterone. Okay. And only 10.8 millimeters thick. What is 10.8 millimeters thick? Please do tell. Do tell. Which, oh, you're talking about the 007. Okay. <clears throat> very trim. Absolutely. Very trim. I nominate Lamont for Wrench Gang. Uh, let's see. Willie, I can't tell if you think, I can't tell if you think it is a comfortable strap or not. This strap? I think I've been pretty clear. It's, it's ex extremely comfortable. <laughs> Are you trolling me, Willie? Are you trolling me? Is that what you're doing here on the channel? It's a Saturday. Come on. Let's, let's, let's try to be troll-free right now. Scenes in the house. My only issue with leather straps was having to swap them out to match the color of my belt and shoes. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. I think the, I, the dark brown is fine whether I'm wearing black shoes or brown shoes or oxblood, I think dark brown is fine. Everything doesn't have to match. Uh, sometimes if you have everything matching, it looks a little silly, to tell you the truth. It looks like you're working too hard. Durr's in the house. He says, Lance, you are definitely correct on that statement. Okay. And Beauty Service says, stunner alert. Okay. And Lamont was on top of his class in the special ed. Oh, come on. Carlos says, stunner. Uh, and Brianna, talk about stunning. The lovely Brianna is in the house. And I'm a little behind on the comments, but hello, Brianna. And BrieFitDance.com. BrieFitDance.com is her URL. And Durr is in the house. He says, haha, are you sure at the top, I would think, lower to bottom? Okay. Well, I'm not sure what you're talking about there. Um, brings real joy, says Thomas. Um, my dad's said no one sick y'all. Okay, good. Lamont's father was very proud of him until he wrecked the car. <laughs> oh, jeez. I'll eat crow, says Kevin. And Lance is in the house. He says Lamont is not allowed to have a driver's license. Willie says, I guess I need to develop a taste for the O2. Not sure I appreciate properly. Well, you have to see one in person because they are stunning in person. Uh, thoughts on laser wedding. Good good question. Uh, Eduardo, uh, laser wedding is the way to go if needed. I know how to drive, though don't need the license no more. Okay. What would need to be defined as? Okay. I saw... A work of a watchmaker with la la watchmaker with laser welding and looked great to me. Okay, so true. Craig says Leslie's in the house. True about what? Oh, she says scam. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay. Um, do you think GS makes their own polyester thread? <laughs> Willie in the house. Good question. Good question. I saw, I doubt they grow their own alligators. <laughs> I doubt they do that. Hey, Craig and everyone. Megan is in the house. I support uh, laser welding. I think I said wedding earlier. I, I, I can't see anymore with these freaking eyes. i got to get an eyeball replacement. Leslie's back in the house. She says, hey, Megan. And Durr, it's true. Lamont eats hot Cheetos in the basement while wearing a tutor. Are you a financial advisor? Sounds like you are giving some sound advice about investments. Willie. I have some information on my website. No, I'm not trying to give financial advice on this channel, but I do have some information on my website, craigship.com. Click on more and go to take control downloads, that section of the site. There's a lot of cool information on finance and money and handling money and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of links and a lot of cool information there, including a lot of information about Bitcoin. The having is, what, in eight days or something? The halving, the Bitcoin halving is coming up. And anybody that doesn't know what the Bitcoin halving means, you might want to research that. It's pretty amazing. Eduardo, been toying with the idea of buying an over-polished date chest and get it restored. Thoughts? I don't know. It depends on the price. You know, just figure on 
figure on a thousand dollars for Rolex to make it right, and if that makes sense, then go for it. But if you get away with eight hundred, you're better off, right? But j I would figure on thousand just just to be on the safe side. Steve says she's stunning. Okay, so who are we talking about? She's stunning. You could be talking about Leslie. You could t be talking about Brianna. You could be talking about Megan. You could be talking about a lot of people here in the chat. A lot of lot of extremely amazing young ladies in the chat. Um, <clears throat> girls rule, rule bar, boys drool. That's the point. Absolutely. I missed Bree chat. Hello, Bree. And Triforce Rich says, honestly, I have changed everyone's opinion on GS after they see them in person. Pictures don't do them any justice. I agree. And Brianna, what do you think about that? Do you think that the, the Grand Seikos look better in person than they do in a picture? What are your thoughts on that? Chime in, because you've seen them in pictures and you've seen them in person. You haven't seen the 002 yet in person. She hasn't seen the 002. Let's see. Um, Brie flexing her Spanish. I've done quite a bit of welding in my day, says Megan. Oh, cool. Cool. Absolutely cool. And maybe you can do it live on the channel sometime. Durs in the house. Brie for dance. Have you broken TikTok yet by burning it down with your dance vids. I'll tell you what, she brings the heat. There's that stunner. I'm going to I'm going to go fill up my water and you guys can check out that 002 stunner. I'm getting hungry. I'm getting hungry. Hungry. But I got a full glass of H2O. Hopefully that will allow me to tide myself over. And I, we got to look at these straps here in a minute before I forget. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, there, I hope to be an influencer someday, but love to do TikToks. Uh, Lance says, um, have bought any watches lately? Uh, Jaja is Spanish too for English speaking. Ha, huh? okay. And Brent, Brett says, yo, Brie. And uh, <laughs> Dur Rachel, formerly known as Rachel Smith. <laughs> there you go. He's making a move on the lovely Rachel. Hey, you got to give the guy credit for making the moves. You got to make the moves. You never know what's going to happen until you make the move. Not sure when I'm going to get on the GS train, says Eduardo. I like how Rolex has a concise lineup that has been almost unchanged for decades. And maybe I need to research GS more. Absolutely. Yep. And I have a link in the chat. I mean, a link in the description to my Grand Seiko section on my page. Research them because I, I'm telling you, you, you'll be amazed. Derek's in the house. Who got the 002? That is Thomas has an 002. He emailed me the photo right there. He's an 002 owner, as am I. So there's two 002s in the in the the bailiwick here, right? In the group. Uh, let's see. The force is with us. The 002 force. Let's see. Aurora. Okay, I uh, just read that. And Triforce Search GS and at Brett High. Uh, we, we got a Skype sometime, says Brett. Okay, there you go. Definitely will take my time with that. By the way, if you want to, um, if you want to help the lovely Brianna, BreeFitDance.com. Go to BreeFitDance.com. Let me see if I have her channel, her, her website here handy. Let me see if I just happen to have this handy. Go, go to BreeFitDance.com, and down at the bottom, there are some links of ways that you can help support her content creation. You can become a Patreon member. You can make donations. You can even send her some Bitcoin. There's a Bitcoin link on there. So BreeFitDance.com. And Durr is a mover and a shaker. you got to be in motion if you want to get the, the finest ladies. Absolutely, you got to be doing that. And he just got a, 
uh, day date stunner, so that absolutely helps. That that gives him another arrow in his quiver. Add me the Chancellor 03 Brett P P G. There you go. Thanks for the mention, says the lovely Brianna. Okay, so let's look at these straps before I forget, because we're getting deep into the show here. It's been an hour, for gosh sakes, folks. It's been an hour. All right, now, I'm going to show you a couple of websites here. This one here, Lux Watch Straps. I get the impression that these are not really that great of watch straps. So, just saying. Okay, that's the impression I get, is the quality is not stellar right just the impression I get okay but that's one website that I found now these other guys uh, I don't think is this the one I think this is the one from Germany this might be the, the folks down in Germany that seem the the quality might be there just just from looking at these and just from a, a, a glance. Uh, let me see if these are the folks in Germany. Uh, is this, will this tell us here? These are the ones. Watch style. Where Where is their location? Oh, for Christ. Excuse me. Excuse my French. About us. Let's go to about us. Why do they, why do they have to hide the ball so much? Yeah, they're in Germany. Okay. So this is... Um, these folks are no joke. Uh, leather, precious. Okay. So, my guess is that that some of these straps are pretty high quality. I'm just gonna go out on a limb here and and guess at that. And so let's say, let's assume, for purposes of argument here, let's assume that you're going to have to spend about $300 for a decent alligator strap. Here's an alligator strap. Okay. So, you know, it's nicely stitched and so on. See double stitching there at the end. And so let's just assume that 300 bucks, right? So if you got five years out of a strap, or if even four years out of a strap, that's not bad. That's not bad. I'm going to try to get them to come on the show, the folks from Germany, see if I can get them to come on the show, because I'd like to get some feedback from them on how well these things hold up. We've been going an hour, and it only feels like 10 minutes. Oh, boy, time flies when you're having fun, right? Um, let's see. Bree... Um, thanks for the mention. Bree should live stream her workouts so her views can, viewers can follow along. I've been telling Brianna that, that she's got to get serious about her content creation and she's got to get busy and get working, but she's, she's, she's there, she's abiding by the lockdown and she's letting the government stifle her creativity, if you ask me. But Bree, you hear? You got to get it, you got to get, you got to get going. You got to get your, your thing going. Don't don't let the government hold you back. Let's see. Kevin, 4002s in the USA. Steve, Craig, and Thomas have three of them. <laughs> there might be a couple of others um, that have been sold. But there ain't that many. I can tell you that right now. Um... Because there was one in Texas, and the folks in Philadelphia had one, so that's two. I have one, and then Thomas has one, and Steve has one. So, yeah, uh, that we know about. Uh, let's see. We have been, okay, I already read that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Durr uh, will like your day date, and she will appreciate you are a member of a very exclusive club. And Brianna says, Brief It Dance on Instagram. Yep, Brief It Dance on Twitter. BriefItDance.com has links to all of those things. What about Hirsch straps? That's a good point. They, may, they might be really good. We'll have to figure all that out. Try to say, Can you message them and see if they'd be willing to come on the show? Any of you guys that have some sway with, with any of these high-end strap makers, 
let them know I'd love to have them come on the show and, and talk about their straps. Hong Dat of HD Straps makes incredible custom bespoke straps for pennies on the dollar from any leather imaginable. And I hear Aaron from Combat Straps does great work during the house. You know, I've, I've heard about Hong Dat. And, yeah, it would be interesting to know the quality, the actual quality of those straps and how well they hold up. I, I think he's in Vietnam or something. I wonder if he'd be willing to Skype in. I wonder what time it is in Vietnam right now. Carlos, you got that right. Okay, Craig, do you drink alcohol? No, I don't. In my understanding, Camille Fourier straps are very good, but not direct experience. And Lamont, what's those, Craig? Okay. Um, oh, boy. Oh, excuse the yawn. Wow. Ah. Craig is not a drinker, says Derp. <clears throat> uh, Lamont, I've had like a glass of wine occasionally, but n nothing, nothing major. No, and I wouldn't buy any. I wouldn't spend any money on any. I would rather spend my money on other things. Uh, Lamont 002 or Day Date? Lamont 002 or Day Date? Are you asking, should Lamont get an 002 or Day Date? Um, she will have a lot of viewers says Willie um, Eduardo Hirsch makes cool straps we haven't covered the day date yet says Derek Willie's in the house I've seen the 002 at my local AD in Texas well what'd you think what'd you think about the 002 when you saw it tell us what you thought don't just say you saw it tell us what you thought we we want the information uh, Derek we lost Craig to the dark side it seems it's not going to be a day date soon I'll tell you once you go Grand Seiko it's very hard to go back to Rolex very hard to go back to Rolex once you go Grand Seiko it's very difficult um, in the second hour you'll discuss the day date Carlos I will join the club one day but mine will be 36 millimeter yellow gold Triforce Rich I don't blame you for that Lance is in the house uh, sent you a picture of a new micro brand called <laughs> no 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 that's it Lance we're not looking at any more of your garbage watches you have got to back away from the keyboard and get away from these garbage watches and just save your money and get something decent please dear God child get away from the keyboard don't be looking at any of those off brand junker watches uh -uh. Um, a friend of mine collects those things but don't please don't go there Durs in the house Craig I have a stingray travel watch roll made by hung dot that is really nice I've heard he does good work Craig you have to check out straps made by Gene Ro Rocho or Hearst okay let c message them and tell them I want them to call into the show uh, Willie's check your GMT for the local time in Vietnam <laughs> Okay, 6.10 a.m. now in Vietnam. So maybe he's an early riser. Tim's in the house. He's, a, he's over that way somewhere. Uh, Craig, you into cigars like casual cigars with friend? No, no, not into cigars either. Lance, you have to ask for extra homework to your school. Stop looking for new watches. Lance is in the house. Are you wearing your Explorer? Asking Carlos. I wonder what Carlos is wearing. Steve's in the house. What's your... What's your vice, Craig? Um, well, I mean, that's hard to say. Um, hmm, that's hard to say. I'm trying to trying to uh, stay away from any serious vices. As you get older, you get more conservative on things like that. So, um, yeah. Uh, and Lance says very nice Duxas are high quality Doxa or whatever yeah no more no more of those let's let's not buy any more of those either Carlos back away from the Doxa website uh, Triforce Rich says Lance are you familiar with indentured servitude Carlos may give you the Explorer in exchange for a deal and Triforce Rich is laughing, Craig laying down the line. Um, Durr's in the house. Carlos, I think Lamont is from Detroit. Homework is of no use there because no one can even read. Oh, my gosh. 
That's terrible. Dry Force Rich says law. Uh, and what WTF is that? Let me Google it. Lance, you're going to get sent straight to Crappy's channel. All right, we're going to wrap this puppy up. Uh, Lance still has one million times better of a collection than Crappy. <laughs> oh, no. That's terrible. Um, <laughs> 40K and watches is Craig's vice. That's a vice. That's possibly a vice. Absolutely. Buying too many expensive watches. That could be classified as a vice. Um, yeah. Yeah. Buying a lot of high-end stuff could be classified by some people as a vice. Always prefer to buy quality when I can. Always strive to get quality items. Because if they're going to be around you, if the things are going to be around you, to me, if they're low quality and they have a lot of issues, it just becomes an irritation to have things around that are, that are marginal. So I like to try to have quality around me. As far as items, equipment, gear, watches... And, of course, people, friends. I like to have high-quality people around me. I don't like to have losers around me because the losers, if you have losers around you, they'll just drag you down. You won't pull them up. They'll drag you down. That's how that works. So, anyway, um, no, no wrapping any puppies up. Sorry, we got to wrap it up. Yes, I would give homework like that. Okay. Okay. All right, so this cha this show really laid the groundwork for getting gathering some information about the high-end straps and who makes them, what the advantages and disadvantages are of different materials, different construction methods. We got to dig deeper into this. So please spread the word. Anybody that wants to talk about this, that wants to Skype in, have them get in touch with me. Let's let's get some experts together and let's figure this thing out. Uh, let's see, Craig, tell us your best story from from your car sales days. Craig, comment on the Tudor stream and take it seriously. Let's go through their history, and you break them down. Triforce Rich, in a in a field camping. That's my vice wearing my fifty seven twelve. Okay, so a car story. Let's let's think think of a car story. Um, <clears throat> well, it wasn't when I was selling new cars, but when I was messing around with the the antique, classic, collectible cars, whatever you want to say. I bought a uh, a twelve cylinder Jaguar E Type, and it was the last year they made them. <clears throat> trying to think what year that daggone thing was. Was it a 75? Anyway, whatever the last year is that they made the V12 E-Type convertible. I don't even remember now what the year is. But it was the last year they made them. And it was an E-Type. And it was in pretty decent shape. And But I bought it. And, and I was driving it home. And, of course, the damn thing failed to proceed. And I'm on the side of the freaking road. And I called my buddy, and buddy comes, and, and we're trying to use ether, you know, to get it to start. We're trying everything we can freaking think of. We can't get the damn thing to start. And I told my buddy, I said, you know, these things are notorious for sucking fuel. These 12-cylinder, you know, uh, Jaguars, they just love to drink high-test fuel. And I said, I'll make a promise to this car. If it will start, I'll give it all the high-test fuel it freaking wants just freaking start right so we tried everything we couldn't get the damn thing to start and so then a, another buddy of mine comes and this guy's the best this guy is like he can put his lay his hand on the fender of a car and then all of a sudden it'll start running right i mean he's the best so he looks around a little bit and he doesn't like jaguars at all none of us really liked him that much but you know an e-type convertible so he looks around and and um he shakes his head, and he says, open up the trunk, and it had a release for the trunk. I open up the trunk, and he goes around, and he fumbles around back in the back. He gets a screwdriver, and he fumbles around, and he finds the electronic fuel pump, and he smacks on it, right, a few times with the handle of the screwdriver. And he says, okay, go ahead and start it, and, and boom, of course, it fires right up and runs. <laughs> 
I took that puppy and I filled that puppy up with high test. <laughs> I didn't turn it off, right? <laughs> I drove it around and enjoyed it for, you know, the rest of the day and part of that night and didn't 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 want to turn it off, right? And uh finally we finally we uh we ended up selling that puppy, but uh but that was just a funny story because we tried everything to get that daggone thing started and it was just that silly fuel pump in the trunk so yeah that's my e-type 12 cylinder jaguar i think it was a 1974 whatever the last year was of the e-type jag let me google that real quick um let's see here e-type uh t-y-p uh, Jaguar. Let's see if it says on the. There'll be a Wikipedia page here. Yeah, to 75. I think 75 was the last year. And um, yeah. I mean, it was a blast. I mean, talk about a car that the chicks love. I mean, my God, a, a, a 12 cylinder. And it was that like silver blue color. And it had dark blue leather. And uh, yeah. <laughs> but man. Um, are they a piece of crap? <laughs> Gorgeous car, total piece of crap. Just like just about, and of course uh, Kyle doesn't want to hear this, but just about any BMW ever made, right? Same thing, just a lot of trouble. Any gasoline-powered Mercedes back in the day. This is back in the day now, right? My God, we were scared to death of um, we were scared to death of any gasoline-powered Mercedes. We would buy the diesels. And run them, run the, run the, you know what out of them. But the gasoline ones, I had a 450 SEL Mercedes that uh, a buddy of mine got from Euro Motor Cars. They got it in on trade, and uh, that thing was a hell of a car, hell of a car. But I'll tell you what, we sold it quick. We we don't keep those damn things around because they are a freaking time bomb. And I've already mentioned to you guys in the past the uh, the 300 SEL. 6.3 liter uh, Mercedes that I had that thing would talk about would glue you to the seat but again we sold that puppy pretty quick because you don't want to keep those things around because they will they will they will burn you big time and Dur says 12 cylinder and 74 wow that's heavy duty yeah that was the last year of the e-type uh, with the 12 cylinder uh, so yeah uh, let's see. You can't drive vintage Jaguars in the rain or they'll break. <laughs> now, that's something you probably don't want to be have out in the rain and in the humidity. You're probably right about that. There is in the house. Craig, have you ever owned a sports car, and what's your favorite car you've ever owned and why? Well, I mean, obviously, the E-Type Jaguar was a sports car, but as far as for regular use for any period of time, I had a 1990 Mazda Miata that I bought uh, that had super low mileage on it. It had like less than 10,000 miles on it. And let me see if I can pull up a photo of that real quick. Um, it, uh, it was great for parades. I used it in parades. It was a fun car to drive, super reliable. Of course, I had a, a BMW Z3 convertible when they first came out. You know, that was a James Bond car, right? Uh, the, the first Z3 was in the James Bond movie, and I had one of those, and uh, and I made some money on that because I got the first one that came into the area, into the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. I bought it at, at uh, VOB BMW, and um, that uh, I made a nice lick on that. I drove it for a while, and then I resold it because they were real hard to get. But there's the Miata, and I had I had Frederick.com put on the side of it, and I used that for parades and different things. That's an elected official there riding in the back, and, and I drove her in the parade. And I used to use that in a lot of parades and got, got a good amount of visibility with that car. And that was a fun car. Drove it a lot. Had it for several years. They're bulletproof reliable, the, the Miata. That's the original, the 1990 first year. Uh, that's a good, good, very good vehicle if you find one in really nice shape. So um, let's see. Craig, do you think about the P1800? I had a P1800. We bought one. We resold it. 
They're all right. I wouldn't want to keep it for any period of time. That's going to be a, a time bomb, too. You're going to get burned on that puppy. So, yeah, I would not keep it very long. Uh, uh, Craig, give me a tour of your Winnebago. I didn't have a Winnebago. I had a um, Bluebird. And uh, there is a video on my channel. There are a couple of videos on the channel of the FC31 uh, Bluebird. Um, I'll pull up a photo here real quick. And then we do have to wrap this puppy up. Um, let me see if I just search FC31. If it'll come up. I might get lucky with that search. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, yeah, there's 192 photos on my uh, on my Flickr of that. You talk about a heavy-duty coach. I mean, that was no freaking joke. That thing was a tank. I mean, if you thumped on the side of that thing, it was like, I don't know, quarter-inch steel or some sort of nonsense. I mean, it was super, super heavy-duty. Um, yeah, so there's that's the top. And let's see if I can find a decent look, look. Look, look at how overbuilt it is. Look at those wheels on that puppy. I mean, you talk about overbuilt. That's like a fire truck, right? There it is at my when I went and I visited my folks down in North Carolina for a couple of weeks. There it is sitting there. But that thing was absolutely bulletproof, reliable, and just mint condition. Uh, just a blast. So, so yeah, there she blows. There she blows. And uh, I enjoyed that coach. I had it for about 15 years. And uh, there's a custom cabinet that I had made inside it. Had some woodworkers do that down in, in Florida at the resort. There's my workstation in there in the front section my computer with three monitors so there's me standing in front of it so yeah that was a blast I enjoyed that it had a cat 3208 diesel in it uh, it had a um, power tech diesel generator in it everything in that thing was was heavy duty no freaking joke. Bluebird, isn't that a school bus? Yes, the, the same people that made the Bluebird school buses across the street, they had the Wander Lodge factory for many, many years. They've shut it down since, uh, but they had the Wander Lodge factory right across the street, and this is in Fort Valley, Georgia. They made the Bluebird Wander Lodge there. And what they did was they used a vastly upgraded school bus chassis. They used uh, galvanized steel they they upgraded all the running gear everything was was totally upgraded and it was a very high end uh, the wander lodge was very expensive back in the day and it was a very high end uh, basically custom made motor coach johnny cash had one uh you know they were they were very upscale and very very heavy duty they were no freaking joke um they were one of the few RVs that would pass a rollover standard. You could you could roll the thing, right? <laughs> and it would be fine. Any other RV, the stick built ones, the plastic ones, they'd all bust all to pieces. I mean, you're dead, right? You, you know, those things are death traps. These things are like you're you're in a bank vault and that they're, they're they're insane. Um so yeah. Um and what year is it? it was a nineteen seventy seven Yes, we, I cover a lot of events, and I generate a lot of content, and I still run Frederick.com here in the uh, Frederick County area. And up until the lockdown, you know, we covered a lot of events and photos, videos, all that kind of stuff. How many ladies have you had in the coach at one time? No, it's only you only want to have one at a time in there. You don't want to have a whole bunch in, inside there. It's better to just have one. Um... All right, we're going to wrap this puppy up. Thanks for watching, and there's the official time. My gosh, we've been going an hour and a half. Time does fly when you're having fun. Please click subscribe. Please click, click subscribe and click the little bell so that you'll get notifications. 
And Carlos says, says, yes, that's very nice. I chose the one I had because the all-wheel drive, but R is more powerful. I can tell you that I used to drive it really fast. I used to drive then 130, 140 miles an hour. I was more crazy then. Yeah, when we're young, we do that kind of thing. Absolutely. And Carlos is still a young man, so there's that. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. We're going to wrap it up, and maybe we'll do a show tomorrow. What do you think? Maybe tomorrow. Thanks for watching.